Hey friends, welcome to Living the KG Life, a pixie dust filled podcast. On today's episode, we have Sarah from Once Upon a T-Shirt with us to talk all about her incredible shop. So stick around, it's gonna be great. All right, well, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Why don't you get us kicked off and tell us who you are and what you do? Sure, yeah. So my name is Sarah, and I own uh, Once Upon a T-shirt with my husband, John. And we actually have another company. Well, we have a couple of companies, uh, but, but most people in here would know me uh, from Once Upon a T-shirt. But I, we do have some other companies that we run. Exciting. Do you want to talk about those before we get into talking all about Once yeah, Upon a T-shirt? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. In 2005, I was a senior in college and um, I was about to finish my teaching degree and I realized I didn't want to be a teacher anymore. And so I created a company called Little Princess Party and it's something that's local here. Um, I live in Iowa in the Des Moines area and we, I don't dress up like a princess anymore, but uh, I hire girls uh, typically from the theater world because my background is education. And so it's a perfect hearing and we dress up like fairy tale princesses and we go and we do birthday parties. Oh, and so we just, fun. Yeah, we just celebrated our 16th year in business. And some people have noticed that I post a lot less on the weekends. And that is why, because people's parties are typically Saturdays and Sundays. And so I am in full party mode on those days and you'll see less of me on Instagram in the Once Upon a T-shirt world. So exciting. I didn't know that you guys did that yeah. too. Yeah, I don't, it, unless someone would follow me on my personal, they went, They might not know that or unless obviously they know me here. I yeah. love it. So today we're going to talk about Once Upon a T-shirt, which I'm currently repping my Make It Blue pocket tee because I'm a big fan of Once Upon a T-shirt. So before we jump too much into like the shop and what you offer and all your great designs, give us a little background on your either earliest Disney memory or what made you fall in love with Disney as a whole? So my earliest Disney memory was when I was probably four or five. And my parents, it was the one and only time they took us to Disneyland. And I remember, I really remember meeting Snow White and just thinking that, I mean, thinking that was the coolest thing ever. And then I, I remember writing A Small World because I, I liked the song. And I remember I, I couldn't get out of my head later. Yep. And then that was the only time that my parents took us. I didn't go again until I was 18. I went with my boyfriend, also named John, but a different John. And that boyfriend, John, was a huge Disney fan. And so he was the one that kind of got me into it. And then I just stayed kind of in Disney mode for the rest of my life. Life. And then when I met my John, he was not at all into Disney. He didn't get into Disney really until Lincoln came along. And then when you see it, you know, through your child, then, you know, you have a different perspective and he ended up liking it. Too. I love it. Now, so you travel from Iowa to Disney like pretty often. So how do you plan your trips? Like you and I, right before we started recording, we were talking about we're actually going to just miss each other, which I'm so bummed about. Uh, but so yeah. how do you plan your trips? Like do you do personal trips and business trips? Do you do kind of like mixed purpose trips? Like how does that work for you, you and your family? So just like what you said, it's sort of a mix. Uh, you know, obviously that's where we're going to get our content when we go down there to the park and, you know, do like any sort of park photos that we would post later. I do magnet drops in the park. I'm sure people um, have seen those before. But actually, the whole idea of going down to Disney, it actually was the reason why we started Once Upon a T-shirt. Let me oh. back it up a little bit. So we were going almost as often as we were going now. We try to go once a month or once a, at least if once every other month. And we're like, we have to have some way to write all of trips off because it's expensive yeah and so he was like hey what if we made a few t-shirts we go down because we had some ideas and we go down and we take pictures and then you know even if the business doesn't make anything on paper you could still say it was a business and even if it shows a loss or whatever breaks even and so that's how it kind of started and then from the very first time we made shirts and went down there 
we had people in the park saying, I love your shirt. Where'd you get it? And then we started to sell them. And then we kind of were like, oh, we, we might have something here. And this was 2016. So a little over five years ago. And so then when we started to make something from it, I remember the first month we paid our mortgage with the sales of shirts. We were overjoyed. We couldn't believe it. I bet. And then, yeah. And then within two years, John quit his job and did this full time, but I carried the insurance. Yeah. And so I had to stay on a little bit longer. But then by year four, I was ready to quit my job and it became both of our full time jobs in 2020. March of 2020, before the big COVID hit, that's when my last day was March 4th of my job that I had been at for 22 years. Oh my gosh, yeah. literally like, right at the line. Right at the line, yes. And so that was very scary at first because I quit my job of 22 years and then Disney shut down the next week. Oh my gosh. And it was, that was a scary season. A scary, a stressful time, I'm sure. Like right as you're ready to like make this big change and like jump into like a whole new chapter of your career and your life, that must have been so scary. Yeah. And, you know, going back to the princesses, March of 2020, nobody wanted us in their houses. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, so here's this other business that, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, we've got this one, this one's stable, this one's been stable. And then for little princess parties, I mean, COVID almost destroyed little princess parties. Not so much once my t-shirt because that's when like the e-commerce boom, you know, people were doing stimulus checks. Disney was closed, so they didn't have that outlet. So they were turning to small shops and stuff like that. Right. And I think any small shop during that time would say it was an awesome time to be in the market. So that was scary because not only had I just quit my job that I'd been at since college, I say 22 years because I worked there. I was running a daycare center, a large daycare center. And so I worked there through high school. And then when I graduated, I did graduate with my education degree. I just didn't go into the school district. I became a director of a preschool. And wow. so, I, so in total, I had worked there 22 years. There was a lot happening March of 2020, a lot of changes. I feel like the understatement was, of the year, a lot of changes. <laughs> it was wild. I mean, and it all almost happened in one month. Quit my job, Disney shut down, nobody wanted parties. I, I remember refunding probably $5,000 worth of party deposits oh my from gosh. Little Princess Party. Because they were like, you know, we want to cancel and we don't know when we would ever want to rebook. Right. Yeah. Oh, so scary. It, that business still isn't 100% back to where it was pre-COVID. So, well, yeah. so let's talk about the shop that is killing it once upon a t-shirt. And we'll talk about some more. I'm just killing it. <laughs> we'll talk about some more Disney World stuff afterwards. But I feel like we're in just like such like a perfect segue into the shop. So you've mentioned that yeah. we sell t-shirts. What else yes. do you carry in the shop? And yes. if you could see um, Sarah so right now, you'd be able to see all the beautiful yes. magnets in her backdrop oh. as well. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So shirts. We have two kinds of shirts. Pocket tees, what you're wearing. Yep. One of my favorites. Shirts. Yes. And screen printed shirts like I'm wearing. And I guess we are both wearing bleach yep. shirts, um, which is like, that's not for everyone. And you can get them either way. And then, yes, magnets you can stick on your car. My wall, I have it with magnetic paint, but they're all like three or four inches, four inches tall. And they're so cute. I can see from my, where I'm right now, I can see on my fridge, I have a vanilla bee, I have a fairy godmother, mm -hmm. and I have Huey, Dewey, and Louie for my doodle magnets on my, on my fridge. Oh, you have the fairy godmother? She's rare. We don't sell her. Yes. So oh. you must have got her on like founder or had her on like on a promo day or something. Like I think it was a promo day. It actually might've been with this shirt that I'm wearing. Oh. Oh, it might have sure. been. Okay, yeah, but not everyone has her because she's not for sale. Yeah, and then we sell like headbands and we call them naughty bows because they have like this little knot. It kind of looks like what Rosie the Riveter kind of wears. We design our own fabric and have it made. So a lot so of our, cool. yeah, a lot of our prints, same ones that we use for like our pocket shirts. We designed all that and then had it and found a place that prints fabric. And so that's something kind of unique to us. And I know there's other things. Oh, stickers. I'm in the shop right now. Keychains. So lots of good stuff. Because I feel like sometimes when you see something in the name, like once upon a t-shirt, it's not just t-shirts. You have a whole bunch of other things in your shop too. Yeah. So it used to just be t-shirts, but then we kind of branched out. But that will always be like the core. You know? And now would you say t-shirts are your most popular item in your shop? I would say the magnet. Really? Yeah. <gasps> 
I would I would say so. Yeah, there's almost 200 of them. Actually, oh with, if, you, if you count like magnet of the month and rare ones, I think there are probably 200. Because I, I think we sell 180 of them right now. Wow, yeah. that is crazy. And I was planning I was planning to ask about this later, but let's talk about it now. So you yeah. mentioned magnet of the month and you mentioned magnet drops. And if magnets are the place to be, let's talk about them. So what is a magnet drop and what is magnet of the month? Okay, so a magnet drop is when we're in the parks and we hide a magnet and then we post about it on our stories in the hopes that someone is maybe in the park or has a friend in the park that they send it to. And then that magnet is found. That's called a magnet drop. I don't know if that's the official name for it. That's just what we call it. I love it. Drop a magnet or whatever. And and they're like is, everywhere. I feel like, so, like you find like nooks and crannies when you do your your drops in places. Yes, because we don't want someone just to randomly find it, just like walking by. So I will put it somewhere where you're not just gonna stumble upon it. But I know that there have been places where I've hidden them, and then like a kid will find it, which is totally fine. We put a little card in it. That says like if you find this and you don't follow us, here's where you can go to show us. Because we love to see like who finds it, and then I try to share that just so other people, yeah. you know, if they were in hot yeah. pursuit of it, they know that it's been found. And then uh, magnet of the month. Okay, that one's kind of tricky, and a lot of people still like have trouble understanding what it is. So we have magnets that we sell, mm-hmm. and then we have other magnets that belong to the magnet of the month. It's not like a subscription program. It, what it is, is it's, it's a magnet that we make that you can't buy. The only way to get it is to find it in the park. So like this trip I'm coming, like this weekend, I'll be bringing some. So find it, win it, that would be like a game or, or sometimes like we, if we mess up an order, we'll just put one in, you know, stuff like that. Things happen. Yeah. Or how most people get it is there are four days a month where you can earn it with a qualifying purchase. There's always going to be the first of the month, the last of the month, and then two days kind of randomly sprinkled in between. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people just go ahead and grab it on the first of the month and not just because they know like it's a guarantee thing. And so it's usually like any $15 purchase in the shop, you're just going to get that included today. And then if you manage to collect all 12, which isn't easy to do, like that takes severe like dedication yeah. to get all 12, especially this year when our original account got shut down and our Etsy shut down. So like they had to like think about us, find us. I mean, it's amazing that anyone got it this year, but there will be a 13th magnet that they will get as a prize. And so we'll be sending those out for 2021 starting this week. Yeah, Exciting. people started to claim them today. So, and now, did you just post that about that on your story? What the thirteenth magnet is? Did I see yeah, that? Yeah, and on the team. Yeah, it's really cute. It's this year. It's Steamboat Willie. So that's not something I would ever sell because I just feel like this Nikki in general is kind of I just don't like to touch it. And then last year was Walt. We we did a Walt magnet, and we I think we debuted it on his birthday last year. <laughs> I love oh. it. So for everybody listening, this episode is going to be going up in January, which means it'll be the first month that you can start yes. your magnet of the month and then hopefully go all the way through to the end of next year and get all of them, including the 13th one. Yep. So January will be start of a whole new challenge. I already have January uh, ready to go. And so I'll be posting about that on January 1st. But yes, we hope that lots of people uh, want to participate. I would say... I'm expecting, this is just a guess. Last year, we had about 65 people complete the challenge. Wow, Um, that's a lot, I feel like. I thought so too. I mean, it might have even been closer to 70. I was really impressed with how many people did it. This year, because we switched accounts halfway through, it's going to be a little harder. I'm expecting maybe like half that. Today was the first day you could start claiming them, and I probably had about 10 people so. One of my best friends, Meg, is going to be listening to this episode. She is a diehard, loves the magnets. So maybe she and oh, I will do the challenge together next year and try to get them all. I would love that. I would love that. I'll, I'll definitely be bringing uh, members magnet of the month with me this weekend. 
the park, but that won't help you for next year. <laughs> yes. I love it. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your design process because for anyone who hasn't seen the shirts yet, they have a very unique style, which I love the doodle. So talk yeah. to us a little bit about where did the idea come from? How do you go from an idea in your head to making the shirt or making the magnet? What does that kind of like high level process look like over at Once Upon a T-shirt? Uh, it's not high at all. It is <laughs> the most basic. Like so I have, I'm on my phone right now. But this is very similar. This is John's old phone. And this is what I do all of my doodling on. And that's oh my gosh. everything is done. Yeah, everything is done digitally. Like this is his phone. And so all the doodles are on my phone. I don't think I have, I don't think I have any on here to show you. But everything's done on here. And I don't even use a stylus. I use my finger. No, and, you okay. use your finger for yeah. those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that so is incredible. That's why I, yeah, so that's why if you look at the doodles closely, like you'll see maybe even where I listed my finger or like they're not perfect and they aren't supposed to be. Like that was kind of the whole point is like they kind of like what you said, like they look unique. You can kind of tell like a once upon a teacher doodle because doodle it's not perfect at all. And that's intentional, I guess. But yeah, everything's wow. done on an old phone with a free app. Actually, it's called Pixar. I think I pay for like the upgraded version, but I could do it without it. That so. is like mind blowing to me that you have all these magnets, all these shirts and everything yeah. is just like straight up from your finger on your phone. Incredible. So simple. It's so simple. Yeah. I love so it. So that's how, and that's been like for all five years, like every design was on a full, like on a free app. That yeah. is so cool. And that's such a Simple. great reminder too that like if you want to start a shop or you want – you have a great idea, it doesn't have to be this big crazy production to make really incredible products. That's awesome. Not at all. We started with five shirts in our shop and I, I think we printed 12 of each, maybe like two or three in each size and that we have very humble, humble beginnings. For sure. That's crazy. Uh, for folks that haven't seen them, it's not just like a character. Like sometimes they have quotes, they have little like mashups. I know one of the shirts that I just packed for my trip this weekend is it's like a mint green shirt and it's got Christmas lights on it and it says, and at last I see the lights, which is one yes. of my all time favorites. So it's a big <laughs> mix of things that you have. So do you just kind of, does something come to you and you're like, oh, I have to make that into a shirt or a character and you're like, I want to make that into a doodle for a magnet. How does that process happen? So it's definitely something that can't be forced and creativity is not an endless dream at all. Yeah. And that can get really frustrating, especially when your creativity depends on your success. Because for people who have followed us for a long time and might have, you know, most of our shirts, and there are people that have most or all of the shirt designs we have ever come out with. Like there are people. That's incredible. I can, I can think of a hand. It, it is incredible. I don't even have all of them. <laughs> and so, you know, I know for those people, you know, they do want something new to come out once a month or something like that. If it's been done and done and done, you will never see it in our shop. I try to add a little bit of cleverness. Like the shirt you said, at last I see the light. That is a, you think of Rapunzel, because that's, well, she says light, but then, you know, you mash that song that has nothing to do with Christmas and then you take Christmas lights and then put them together and then it, it works. And so yeah. I think people who have been with us for a long time do expect some level of cleverness. Same with Carrie from Third Wish. Like she does yeah. such a good job of taking something that has nothing to do with Disney and mashing it. And I really enjoy her stuff. We try to do the same thing. I know she does a lot of with Taylor Swift. So I yeah. try to stay away from uh, Taylor just out of respect for Carrie. But I do have one. Oh, well, it's retired now. But it was a Vanessa shirt from Little Mermaid. I, can't, I don't even remember. Oh, darling, I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream is what that shirt said. Oh, I and love that. Yeah, it, we don't have it anymore. I, I mean, I could bring it back to Halloween or something. So I haven't thought of a new shirt for probably three or four weeks and I just have to wait on it and hope that lightning strikes at some point and I think of something, but hopefully it'll strike this weekend really on happen. your trip. Yeah. You know what? Disney World is a great place for that to happen. Yes. That happens often, actually. That's probably why I go so much. Yeah. I know that. When I come home, I'll come home with a new design. <laughs> Happy and excited and refreshed and full of pixie dust and ready to go. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. 
So now exactly. for folks that have not purchased with you yet, give everyone yeah. kind of an idea of what the buying process looks like. If someone's like, oh, I love this. Yeah. This sounds great. They find you on Instagram and we'll make sure to drop, you know, all your handles and tags and your shop and everything. Okay. What does that whole process look like for someone new to your shop? There are two ways to buy. So we always have a stash of ready to ship stuff. Like at any given time, there's going to be like 400 plus product ready to ship. 400, um, 400, 400 yeah. people. That is bananas. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just because we're adding new designs all the time and stuff like that. I mean, like I said, there's almost 200 magnets. So that takes you know care of almost half of them. There's probably 130 different shirt designs. Half of them are probably pocket tees. Mm -hmm. But then I think what you're referring to is our pre-order process. And that is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whenever we come out with a new design, okay, so let's just say we were reprinting this. Okay? We have to know that there is enough demand before we spend the money to reprint. Because to reprint even just one shirt is hundreds of dollars. Because we don't print our own stuff, someone in our town does it. And that's all they do. They screen print. And so we do this process called a pre-order. And it's a 24-hour period where people can request what size they want, what color they want, if they want like a youth size. Because 95% of our customers are adult Disney fans. And so people will stumble on our page sometimes and they wonder why we don't have any kids clothes. And we can, we can make it a youth size, but we have to know about it before we go to print. Mm -hmm. And so that's the pre-order process. And so that's when you're going to be able to customize, you know, if somebody would rather have a long sleeve or maybe a tank top or sweatshirt, they can request anything they want in that pre-order process. The problem is the window is only 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And we do use the sticker feature because if I had to take all of those requests, in the DMs, they're going to get lost because every share, tag, you know, that's coming, that's going to be pushing people's messages down. Right. The sticker feature is so awesome because it keeps it in like this little digital file and no one's going to get lost. But the bad thing is, is after the sticker expires, you can't add anybody to it. So we always print a few extras, but they're going to be adult sizes. They're going to be on one color that we choose. And you're not going to get notified when they go in the shop if you're not attached to the pre-order. And so a lot of times people miss it, you know. Sure. So. so really, if you want to make sure you have either the shirt size, the color, the bleach, whatever those options are, you want to make sure you get the shirt right. that you want put in the pre-order. That's something I know. Like I said, my friend Meg and I will like message you and we're like, oh, new shirt. Did you see it? Make sure you put in your pre-order. Um, oh, because awesome. like you said, having that window is so important. Like if shit happens, right? Like all of a sudden the day is gone. Right. So putting those orders in is so helpful. But I think what's also really great with your ready to ship stuff is you post a lot about how fast you guys ship. Like you'll post and be like, if you order this, this will still ship today. And I'm always like, how does she do it? How yeah. does she make it happen? Yeah. Well, well, it's because it's mine and John's full-time job. And you don't see that very often with a small shop yeah. where it's both the husband and the wife full-time job. So my job is anything with social media, uh, anything with design is me. And then anything really that you don't see happening is John. So he's the one who like always makes sure we have enough shipping supplies. And he's the one who's actually like holding your shirt, putting it in the bag. His background is military, and so I'm like blah, everywhere, and John is very like A B C D. We are so opposite, and it it's like a perfect so team. Works. Oh, it works so well for because he would hate this. He would never agree to go on to a podcast talk and stuff like that. And where I'm like, this is my job. I get to do this. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll tell John. We said thank you. We appreciate all of his work and his yeah. service as well. Thank you for oh, all I of the things. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, our mail where we live gets picked up between one and two every day. And so that's how a lot of times I feel bad because I know it's repetitive sometimes. I'm sure people are like, we get it. But a lot of times in the morning, I'll post uh, like a countdown. I'm like, if you can get your order in by the time this countdown is done, your order will ship today. Because we, ha we do such volume, we have a mailman that do a or a mailwoman come to our door every single day. So we don't even have to win. Wow. Um, yeah, and she picks it up between one and two every day. And if we ever put, you know, like that your order has to be in by 1.30 and she comes that day at one, we'll run it. We'll make sure we run it to the 
post office just because we don't because we don't know if someone was really counting on that you know so, right wow yeah. it's like your own personal mail delivery that is incredible <laughs> actually I, I want to say that service is available no matter what your volume is and once we found out that we could have it we we're like oh that's awesome we don't have to go stand in line anymore she just comes and she scans it all and but yeah it's great especially if it's a, like an icky day where we don't want to leave right and if I remember correctly you guys just recently put an addition on your house that you shared on Instagram that's like your whole shop now right yes I'm in it right now we worked out of our kitchen <laughs> for four years you know like I said we started off where we printed five designs and so it was just a little tiny it might have even been a tote back then I think it was just a little tote that stayed in, stayed in our kitchen in the corner and then we had the dining room you know the table where we hold stuff but then as we grew and as product space grew we realized we either have to rent a space or we need to do this and we need to add on to our house it's at that point and so we added an addition it got finished January of this year and I would say it's probably like 500 maybe square feet it, if it wasn't I had to kind of rearrange so that I could be back here because this is normally where our desk is and so uh, I would flip my camera around if it was like John would kill me right now he, <laughs> he like wants it to be there and I have shirts that are bleaching right now but I I will a, work, I a working so, space yes this addition has been awesome our house has four levels it's a no matter where you go up or down in this place you're, you're going on stairs but this took up like a big chunk of our backyard to add this addition on that's incredible but totally worth it yeah I yeah. love it and back and back to the March 2020 lots of changes I want to say that March 2020 was the first like payment we had to make on our new mortgage because we had to like completely redo our mortgage right. to be able to add this giant addition and so that was another big change that happened that month <laughs> Ugh, all at once all at yeah, once it was it really was so let's talk about the future what are you most excited about bringing either into your shop or having in your shop let's say since we're in December in 2022 well, right now we're focused on rebuilding our account that we lost. We lost our account in June and we've been building it back. So we want to continue to bring quality and cleverness to our design. We're always a season kind of ahead. And so right now we're in full festival of the art mode. Exciting. And after that, we'll, yeah. And after that will be, you know, the flower and garden festival. We try to have at least one new shirt. For each of the festivals and as well as the option to um, get any of the past years. I would say without giving away too much, for 2022, you will see more stuff for kids, which you really haven't done or marketed. And not just kids, babies too. Awesome. Um, yes. And so I think we'll probably later this week be revealing our very first baby product. I know uh, quite a few people listening that will be excited to hear that. Okay, good. And then, yeah, I would just say like more stuff for kids. So that's probably where we're really lacking. Like I said, right now, our client base is the Disney adult. And, and even maybe even more specifically, like the Disney annual pass holder adult. Mm -hmm. Right here. Um, <laughs> Once you find like your lane, right? Like that was actually what Carrie and I were yeah. talking about too. Like once you find your lane, if I'm in the parks and I see one of your shirts, I'm like, oh, that's a once upon a t-shirt, right? Like oh, you know it and you I like you see that. it and you know it, right? And that's, I think, what is so fun about doing this segment of the podcast, Creating Magic and highlighting all the shops that love to do that. They're passionate about it. And they just want to share fun magic with people. That to me is so cool. And I agree, a lot of people come to me. And that's actually why I started the podcast because people were like, I have questions about Disney or where do you shop or where do you get this? And I literally had a note, you know, if you want these things, this is where you go. You want these things, this is where you go. And I was like, I'm just going to bring these people on. And like, you guys can tell your story because people are going to want to hear from you why you started your shop, what you love about it, why you're still doing it years later, why it's you and your husband's full-time job. That makes it feel even more personal to people to want to come shop with you because they know, yes, it's a unique shirt. Yes, it's something special, but now they know you and your story behind the shirt. That's great. And you mentioned um, seeing our shirt in the park. Or so we call it seeing our shirts in the wild five years later that is one of the coolest things that happens as a small shop owner and even we get recognized like that is 
so I don't know if there's anything like cooler than that when when I see my shirt and sometimes when I see my shirt out run up to the person like I don't even like wait for them to maybe notice me like run up to them like I love your shirt and then they're like oh my gosh your shirt (laughs) well some of them some of them have said that and they're like oh it's you or especially when we were on Etsy we got a lot of like random traffic and so sometimes I'd go up and I'd be like I love your shirt and they'd be like thanks I got it on Etsy I'm like okay (laughs) but then I didn't you know I didn't want to be weird and be like well I I am the Etsy that's me yeah yeah I mean I didn't want to be stalkerish or anything but I definitely still have like those tendencies like John doesn't do that he would never ever walk up to someone and be like hey I like the shirt it's one fun t-shirt that's us he would never do that that I'm like in your face in two seconds after and so you're okay if people come up to you if they see you in in the parks people are okay to come and chat with you I love it that I love it there was one time John didn't want to go back to the park one night like we'd been there all day and and I was like is anyone in the park right now like and you wouldn't mind a tag along and like people were like come we're here and like that was just so cool yeah that was so cool to me that I had that option I guess yeah um but yeah seeing a shirt of ours or even like when I recognize when I carry shirts or, you know, buy Kai shirts or something like that. I just think it's so cool how like of all the places everyone could be in the world that like I ended up in the same place with that person at the same time to see the shirt. I think that's so cool. I love it. Let's wrap up really quickly with, so you go to Disney often. What yeah. are some of the things that are like your favorites? You love to do them. You must do them. They're your traditions, whether it's you with John and Lincoln or just you by yourself. What are like your must do's okay john and lincoln are picky eaters so uh we definitely have like three or four spots that we all when if i'm with them we always go we have to eat at nine dragons in epcot in china that is oh. like a, a must it is so good they just recently reopened after being closed for a year and a half and so that was really really special we if i'm with lincoln we have to do test track one of his favorites, he loves to design the cars and he tries to eat everyone else. And he's really good. Like his scores are some, like he's never been the top scoring car of the day, but he's been very close. Yeah. And then the boys do not like water rides and water rides are my favorite. So I have to save those for a different trip. I go with my sister a lot, Andrea, who owns Big Boutique. And she and I have very different trips because like not any food that I don't like and so like we always try to like this next trip we're gonna go back in January just me and Andrea and we uh, got uh, the sushi place in Japan uh, like the boys should never eat there we always try to try something new uh, the last trip that we did our new thing was the dessert party at Magic Kingdom I am and dying so, to try that dying to do it I wouldn't do it again <gasps> Really? I wouldn't. The desserts were like very filler desserts. Like they weren't great. Like nothing was great. I also feel like you on your stories will do like food reviews and you always give very honest reviews. Like you're not like, oh my gosh, everything's amazing. You're like, this was not good. <laughs> so like oh, Sarah, will yeah. te- Sarah will tell you the truth via story oh, of her yeah. food reviews. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you guys, but even if I wanted to lie, my face would tell you before the lie <laughs> came out. Like, I'm like, oh. Um, but I will try anything. Like, I tried octopus at one of the festivals this year. And so that was, like, something new. Like, just for an example, have you ever tried the Ohana, like, bread pudding? I've or never been the, to Ohana. Oh, or the um, the Rose and Crown sticky toffee pudding. I mean, those desserts. I'm probably, I bet, on like Lincoln and John's level. I'm like Uh, a chicken fingers from a cosmic rays. uh, (laughs) That's where you can find me. (laughs) Oh, I won't even eat there. Or like a filet of California grill. Okay. Over there. Okay. Yeah, you're definitely like the boys. (laughs) Yeah. uh, There are some desserts in Disney World that blow my mind. I think about them when I go to bed. I think about them for days later, weeks later, months later. These, the desserts that they served at the dessert party, they were just to fill you up. There was nothing that I had more than one of, but then you're probably like, oh, but the the fireworks, then it was amazing. It wasn't at all. Shoot. Where we were, we had a ton of trees block our view. And yeah, and we were sad because we wanted just to be 
blown away. I probably would not do the magic kingdom dessert party again. I would Bummer. maybe try another one. That's I know. I didn't want to tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and especially because enchantment, I don't know if you did it for enchantment or for happily ever after, but yeah. I've said I'll wait to give my real review of enchantment until I see it in person, but like happily mm-hmm. ever after is my all time favorite. So everyone's like, oh, it's a lot of things that oh. are kind of meh. Oh, no, I don't, I didn't think that at all. I loved, I've seen Enchantment up close too. And, and I knew that I liked the show. I just didn't like where we were sitting Yeah. for the dessert party. You know, it, that was not cheap. That was like, I want to say it was like $110. Per person, the, right? Per person. And so, I mean, that was a splurge. I don't just drop $110 on anything. I mean, that was like something we talked about for, for a long time and we decided to do it. And so that was that was kind of sad. I have the highlight on my story. I'll have to go um, check it out after kind of this. See. It it was cool to see Tinkerbell because we were sitting right where she flew. Oh, so that's cool. Yeah, that was that part was cool. And they had champagne, and that was good. Champagne's always good. Yeah, can't. I guess I did have more than one of those. I said I didn't have <laughs> seconds about anything, but I did have two glasses. Yeah. I love it. So let's do our last two sections, which is like my favorite. The speed round of favorites. We'll go through kind of like really quick. We'll name something. You tell us what your favorite one is. And then the last will be your favorite magic moments. Ready? Okay. Okay, great. What is your favorite resort? I've never really stayed at a Disney one. <gasps> I stay off property. I know. I uh, love so it. So for me, the, the Hilton Grand Vacation Park Soleil is my favorite. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure if I could ever afford to stay at Floridian, I wouldn't turn it down. But that's great because I feel like a lot of people don't know if they do stay off property, where to stay off property. So that's a great one. Yes, any of the Hilton Grand Vacations are, they're nicer than the Floridian. They are so swanky. I yeah, love it. I love them. All right, favorite restaurant on property? Oh, yeah, for sure. Nine Dragons um, in Epcot. In China. Love it. Favorite park? Epcot. Epcot has been picking up steam for a while everybody was saying magic kingdom but epcot is coming in strong and i'm happy happy to hear that how about your favorite ride at each park magic kingdom would be splash mountain love the water ride yes at epcot it's mission space which not very many people like that one but i love it the boys will not ride it with me that's a sister's trip only uh at hollywood it has to be mickey and minnie's runway that's probably my favorite I think that's just so cool. And then uh, Animal Kingdom, it used to be Cali River, but now it's Everest because Universal has a Cali River rapid type ride that is 10,000 times better. Really? Oh, sorry. Really? That's okay. So, Which, yeah. What's that one called? Yeah, it's called like Bluto's Barge. It's in Islands of Adventure. And it's in like the little tune world over the bridge. And and actually, I had been there several times and missed it. You know, the same sort of boat, the, the round boat, like in Cali, but the ride is so much better. But you do get completely soaked. It's like a summer ride. I love it. So that's another good tip for people that don't follow Sarah yet. They also do a lot of Universal and you share a lot of Universal content. So make sure you follow Sarah for yes, that too. Yes, I do. I know it's controversial, but like I do love Universal as much. I mean, I think it's great that people love both. Like it doesn't have to be one or the other. In September, I went with my brother and his wife. My brother and I did one day at Universal and we had a blast. I mean, it was one of those days that was like torrential downpours the entire day. Oh. But we were like, you know what? We're having a great time. Everything's going to be fine. Both the Universal Parks are awesome. And we would maybe would never have even gone, but somebody who worked at Universal gifted us a park hopper day. We could actually go to both parks plus the water park, but we didn't make it to the water park. And she was like, do you guys ever come here? And I'm like, no, we don't. And she's like, well, if you want to, I can help you up with tickets. And we became pass holders right after that because we were like, this is so awesome. And a lot of people don't know this. A universal annual pass, I want to say they start around 300. I mean, they what? are, wow. oh yeah, like a one, wow. like a one day park hopper ticket, probably around 200 and a season, a seasonal season pass. So you're not going to be able to go at the big time, you sure. know, yeah. which is fine for some people, but like that, that's the one John has. I don't even think it was $300. So a lot of people don't realize that the value at universal, that'll change right. once at this universe comes out I expect it to but for now yeah it's crazy like a fifth or whatever of the Disney prices 
Yeah. And Once Upon a T-Shirt also does have Harry Potter shirts as well. So if you are going to Universal and you're a Harry Potter person, it's not only yeah. Disney shirts at Once Upon a T-Shirt. Yeah. We have some. We think that's probably why we, our account got shut down. So we've definitely pulled it back from wow. anything anything Harry Potter, which sucks because I just love it. And I have so many ideas that will never get done probably because they're a lot more, they're a lot pickier with their intellectual property in any sort of regard. I mean, you can't even have a shirt that mentions butterbeer. Wow. Yeah. So like they're not messing this, around. No, I'm pretty sure that's why we no longer have our Etsy and we no longer have our original once my t-shirt account because if, if anyone goes on it now you can only scroll back through june which is when we started this new one yeah so let's do what's your favorite disney snack it's definitely not popcorn <laughs> um, i would say i don't know i'm so basic i guess it's the mickey bar but we're talking about a quick snack i do love the mickey bar same i love a mickey okay. bar for this next trip i want to get the one in animal kingdom that's like dipped in like blue with sprinkles have you seen those ones I have. I hate sprinkles. So I hate them. Remember how I said I didn't really hate any food? That is one I hate. Any If it has sprinkles, I won't eat it. I think they're gross. That is the hottest hot take I think I've ever heard. I love it. <laughs> All right. How about your favorite merch or collectible item? Oh, gosh. I actually make it a point not to really get anything. I the don't slippery slope. Anything. A lot of stuff I have is small shop stuff. I don't from the Disney park stores. So I love that plug, though. Buy some stuff from some small shops instead. I love that. I have a lot of stuff that, yeah, that small shops that I absolutely love. I don't even buy anything when I go to Disney. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right, how about, and I have a feeling I might know a couple of these, but what's your favorite non-Disney park activity? If we're not at Disney, we're at Universal. We have very few even pool days because we go to the park so much. Yeah, we'll be at Universal. Or we do mini golf a lot. We do that a lot on our trips. We try to get, get around in. I love that. All right, how about your favorite Disney movie? 1,000% Aladdin. And I loved the live action just as much. Excellent. And how about your favorite yeah. Disney character? 1,000% Jasmine. <laughs> yes. I should represent her more because I love her so much. And I love just Aladdin as a whole. I love it. All right, last two questions. What is your favorite magic moment from Disney World as a guest? And then your favorite magic moment as a shop owner? Okay, so as a guest, there was this one time that we were at where you can meet Belle in Magic Kingdom. It's not, I don't think it's open yet. We were there. Yep. And the person working the experience saw our shirts. I couldn't even remember what shirts we had on that day. I think we had Guns and Roses on. And they loved our shirts so much that they gave us fast passes. And we could not, for whatever reason, get on Splash Mountain that day. And John was like, if you can get a fast pass, we'll, we'll go on it. But I don't want to wait in line. And we got to use those and go on Splash Mountain. <laughs> oh, I love that. So it's kind of almost like a mashup of like, because of your shirts that are yours, you got an extra fast pass. That's yes. awesome. Yeah, that was so, so like, oh, I just thought of another one that might top it. Lincoln's favorite character, well, I don't know if it, it still is, but was, is Alice. Love Alice. And one day we were in line to meet her. It was in the morning and we didn't realize that the first family who is in line to meet Alice for the day, she takes on the teacup with her. And what? we got to ride. Yeah, it's just the first family of the day. Obviously right now it's probably not happening. But this is pre-COVID. Same with Aladdin and Jasmine. They'll take the first family of the day and take them on the magic carpet. What? And so we got to ride. Yes. And so we got to ride the teacup with Alice. It was so awesome. That and is. So that's probably my favorite. That is one of the coolest things I think I've ever heard. I had. No, I have never heard that before. That's yeah. so cool. And it, there might be more that, that I don't know about, but I do know of those two. But right now, it's not an option but it was so cool and he just was and we have pictures because the photographer her photographer you know was with us not in the teacup with us but like we have so many pictures from that so it was so cool oh mm -hmm. I love that that's like yes and then that's perfect it was so fun 
And then um, as a shop owner, a magical moment as a shop owner. So I think that would probably be when I was at the park with my, with my whole family, like my parents and everything. And it was probably the first time that we got recognized in the park and someone came over and they asked if we were Sarah and Dawn from what's my t-shirt it was like in front of my family and so it was like that was probably a pretty cool moment there was also another moment where someone said that they got free uh cheeseburger egg rolls because the card attendant liked their what's my t-shirt and I was I like no it. they're amazing <laughs> oh that's my favorite snack that is 1000 percent my favorite snack the cheeseburger egg rolls from Magic Kingdom I love it. And no. that trumps the Mickey bar. I have still not tried one of those, so I will keep an eye open because I feel like every time I go by, that cart's not, not open. They may sell out. I mean, they, that line is, is always long. It's so good. It's right at the entrance of Adventureland. All right, so everybody keep your eye out. Going into Adventureland. Yeah. Cheeseburger so good. All right, well, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. This was awesome. For folks that don't follow you yet, or if they followed your old Instagram account, where can everybody find you now, both on Instagram and your shop? So on Instagram, it's the same name, Once Upon a T-Shirt. It just has a little underscore after it. And the T, it is important to note that um, it's spelled T-E-E, Once Upon a T-Shirt underscore is our uh, Instagram. And then our website is www.onceuponatshirt.com, but that T-Shirt it's just T. The letter T. <laughs> yeah. So but we'll make sure to put them both in yeah. the show notes so that everybody can okay. can find you. Yes, that would be wonderful. And anyone that places an order tonight or in the morning, it'll ship right away. I love it. Well, thank you so, so much. And everybody, make sure you go follow Sarah and John and Lincoln and follow all their adventures in Disney. Check out Once Upon a T-shirt. They are fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for hanging out today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our episode with Sarah from Once Upon a T-Shirt. Make sure you're following us at Living the KG Life on Instagram and you've subscribed on all of your favorite streaming platforms. New episodes will come out every Monday and we've got some bonus episodes coming up as well. So stick around. It's going to be great.